Hello everybody. Let's talk about the superior mesenteric artery, which is the artery of the midgut. So let's see, once you remove all the uh, structures in the major greater sac of the abdomen, what we get are the posterior abdominal wall structures. And amongst these structures, let us first highlight the iota. And the artery that we are going to talk about today is the superior mesenteric artery which is the second ventral branch of the abdominal aorta and it starts around one centimeter below the celiac trunk which is an artery a little higher up okay and further down from the superior mesenteric artery we have the inferior mesenteric artery which is another class for another day and where does it originate if you are asked about its surface marking you should know that the superior mesenteric artery originates opposite to the lower border of l1 that is the first lumbar vertebra now, the arteries, the ventral arteries of the iota specifically supply areas depending on the embryological origin of the gut. So, we have in our uh, part, we will come to the embryology, but before that, we will see that the superior mesenteric artery at its origin is overlapped by the body of the pancreas that is over there and it lies between the left renal vein below and the splenic vein above. So these two structures sort of sandwich this superior mesenteric artery between them. Now let's see what are the embryological correlation. So the intestines can be divided into foregut, a midgut and a hindgut. So the foregut starts from the lower part of the esophagus all the way to the proximal half of the second part of the duodenum. So that is the foregut and that is supplied by the celiac trunk over there and that is why the celiac trunk is called the artery of the foregut. Now the midgut starts from the proximal part or the distal part of the second part of the duodenum all the way down to the transverse colon where it ends by supplying the right two-thirds of the transverse colon and that is the midgut. Till there we have the midgut. So the entire small intestine is part of the midgut and the superior mesenteric artery is the artery of the midgut. The remaining part of the gut tube becomes the hindgut and the inferior mesenteric artery is the artery of the hindgut. So today we are going to see the superior mesenteric artery which is the artery of the midgut. Let's see the branches. For that let's take on a diagram from an older edition of Grace. And it's a beautiful diagram which shows the branches of the inferior, superior mesenteric artery. Now the branches can be classified as arteries coming from the convex side which is the left side of the superior mesenteric artery and arteries coming from the concave side which is the right side in the diagram. Alright, so the arteries in the convex side are basically branches which supply the small intestine. So there are around 12 to 15 jejunal and ileal branches and altogether they are forming all of these they form arterial arcades they are called arterial arches or arcades and from these arterial arcades we have straight arteries going and supplying the small intestine and these are the vasa recti or the straight artery in latin so all of the small intestine are supplied by the branches coming from the convex side or the left side of the superior mesenteric artery except the last part of the small intestine which is supplied by the iliocolic artery Right. So, the terminal 10 to 12 centimeters of the small intestine are not supplied by the jejunal and ileal branches. They are supplied by another artery also coming from the superior mesenteric but not from the same side. Now, let us see the arteries coming from the concave side of the superior mesenteric artery. So, the first artery that you should know probably most important in your multiple choice also is that is the artery which is called the inferior pancreatico duodenal artery. So it forms an anastomotic arcade around the second part of the duodenum and the head of the pancreas supplying both these parts. So the inferior pancreatico duodenal artery is over there in the picture as you can see. The next branch is the middle colic artery which goes a little downwards and towards the right. It looks up in the picture but you should know that the gut is lying down. So the artery passes down towards the right side and immediately divides into a medial and a lateral branch and these anastomos correspondingly with the other arteries. There you have the lateral branch. Then you have the right colic artery which is the third branch of the superior mesenteric artery on its concave side. The right colic artery supplies the ascending colon. So the middle colic artery supplies the transverse colon and the right colic flexure 
and the right colic artery supplies the ascending colon. The last artery that we have to see today is the iliac colic artery which supplies the first part of the colon which is the cecum and the appendix as well as the last part of the small intestine which is the distal most 10 to 15 centimeters that we saw in the previous slide. So these are basically the branches of the superior mesenteric artery in short and hope this helps. Let's meet again for the next class. Thank you.